Hey guys, all right, so we are gonna be going and we're gonna be doing the third square of our lovely four square fruit. So I'm gonna pick a square today. I'm thinking I'm gonna work with this one. And now it's time for us to see what we are gonna be doing. So let's go to our PowerPoint. All right, so some of you may be familiar with this term, but we're gonna be using post-impressionism. Now, post-impressionism came after the Impressionist movement, hence the word post. Um, and the most famous post-impressionist is Vincent Van Gogh. There was another guy that he worked with um, named Paul Signac, and there was a, another guy called Paul Gauguin. However, really when we think about that style, we think about Vincent Van Gogh. So some of the key features for it is there's multiple shades of a color. You'll notice in here these blues, there's deep blues, there's mediums, there's ceruleans, there's light. So it's not a flat tone, it's a varied color used across the whole space. And you'll also notice that it features dashes. It uses motion to give the painting a feeling of movement and less of a static feel. So for us, what this is gonna end up looking like are kinda like these. Now, this is one of those movements that you really wanna be specific about as you're working with your picture because it's a little bit different than what we normally do. So first thing I did is I'm just gonna practice on this scrap piece. You guys can practice on the back of your folder. We're just gonna practice with one crown, doesn't have to be a specific color. Now, what we want is short staccato marks. So they should have direction for instance, you can tell where I started and stopped. And you'll notice what I'm really doing is I'm flicking. I'm not going like this. I'm not dragging. So it's not a petting a puppy situation. You also want to avoid going and drawing them. Notice how different those look. This one, we see the movement. We see the action. This one is very staid, very like stable. That's not what you're going for. The other thing you want to avoid is this. This is called stippling. So when you're just banging down the tip and you don't have any direction to it, that's a stipple. So that's something totally different. So let's try together. We're just going down, 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 down. And as I go down, I'm pulling back a little bit. Down, 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 down. Now when I go in and I'm using those colors, I am going to be using multiples of the colors just like we saw Van Gogh do. So once you add that motion in, you're going to start to see those different colors. All right. So I've gone ahead and pulled several colors from my guava. Um, I noticed that in this one, I get to see the outside of the guava, the leaf and the stem. And then I see just a tiny bit of the inside. So since I know that the inside is that pink color, and remember you can kind of look at your colors and what you might need based on your realistic pictures. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go do the pink so I don't forget. So I've got a whole slew of pinks right here. Let me use a little bit of different things. So Now if you're not sure what that color is going to look like, you could always trust on the back or test on your folder. So I'm getting... But I do want to be able to see the overall difference. So it shouldn't look like it all comes just perfectly together. There should be some clear outliers. Okay, so I've got that right now. I know that this part has that green. So I've gathered a whole bunch of greens. And that's part of the reason we're using crowns as well is because you've got so many different shades that you can use. So I'm gonna start coming in. And I'm gonna think about getting that whole piece nice and full. So I shouldn't see big open spaces. What I should see is those lines of movement. It helps if you start thinking about which way things would go in your piece. So this one's a little bit light. It's kind of hard to see here. But let's see if we zoom out a little bit, if you'll be able to see better. Mm, no. We'll keep going. Green is always a hard color for the projector. He has personal feelings about it. 
So you can see right there how it's developing. I think I'm going to come in with some of my typical green. So there may be some colors in this that aren't quite as perfectly realistic. For example, this typical green is a little bit more green than what I see on the photograph. But it's in that same color family, and it's going to allow me to have that variety as I go. So I'm going to pause and let y'all see what it looks like when it's all finished. Oh, that paused the screen. All right. All right, so I've gotten my main colors. You can see I've thought about those strokes inside. Now, I also am going to pick a color in the background to go and do those strokes with. The thing that I want to consider is that it doesn't need to interfere with this. So I wouldn't want to use pink because that's something that would look like it was part of our fruit. And I wouldn't want to use green because obviously that's going to interfere with the outside of the fruit. So I think I'm going to use blues and do a blue background. So I'll see you guys in just a second when I've got it. Okay, so here it is. I've gone, I've added my background color, I've got all of those post-impressionist marks made, and now I've got three pieces of my four square fruit ready to go. All right, I'll see you later for the next one.